Thank you very much for the opportunity for me to speak to you about the importance of gender in reducing the amount of waste that we produce. I've spent most of my career in higher education, but during that time I've also worked in um, environmental groups um, voluntarily and in governance. And I'm drawing um, on that experience and also on EU research I've done uh, 10 or so years ago, and also in a programme that launched this week um, in Tenerife that is looking at tourist, tourism and waste in different areas in Europe, and I'm the gender consultant on that. Some of you may have considered this before. I probably think most of you haven't. Um, but waste is a profoundly gendered issue, as are uh, most things in this world, both in the waste management industry and in waste management behaviours. And I like this photograph particularly of um, some artwork done in Brazil with the um, artist Victor Munoz working with recyclers on a huge waste dump just outside Rio de Janeiro. Um, I know we're looking, considering Europe here, but one of the striking things in the film that was made was how what many of us might consider as waste pickers were actually dignifying their work by recycling and calling it recycling and actually set up a trade union to do that. And also notably, at least half of the recyclers were women. In the waste management industry in Europe, in my experience, working um, in the EU, it is overwhelmingly a profession dominated by men, particularly in municipal waste management. And that is partly because of the uh, dominance of the engineering profession, which looks for hard solutions. It focuses on technology rather than on behavioral issues. And so, automatically, there's a privilege of the technological issues rather than thinking about how we consume and how we dispose of products. In the UK, it's a very male-dominated sector. 18% of employees are women, but the majority of those are employed in the administrative and secretarial sectors. Very few are professionals. Now, I would suggest that certainly in countries that have the same profile as the UK, it's going to be difficult to shift that because the majority of students and um, both at undergraduate, postgraduate and PhD level going into engineering are men. And the figures I've presented here uh, show men and women in science and engineering. And engineering, it, along with physics, is the most male-dominated of those sectors. In the university I've recently left, something like 95% of all students of engineering were men, and that included civil engineering, which traditionally, I think, attracts more women, and the other areas are materials and electronic uh, and mechanical. So either we, actually, we probably have to do both, make a real shift in who studies engineering and, and perhaps what engineering studies but also to really think about who we want to be working in the waste management sector. I'll come back to that. So the impacts of that kind of um, profile is that the gender imbalance is perpetuated, but decisions made regarding waste management will favour the technical and the end of pipe, the disposal issues. Although it's really gratifying to hear in my, my colleagues presenting here the focus um, that is, is, is being given as well. But drawing on a very narrow range of people, male engineers, means that there's a very narrow range of experiences to draw on. So that is also feeding into a persistent misunderstanding of why gender is important. And the research I did for the DG Environment, which was pilot research on gender mainstreaming, um, which the waste um, team decided they wanted to do that, exposed that 
Um, not, not particularly disinterest, but just mystification as to why gender might be important. And the translation from the Portuguese manager that we met was that gender was extraterrestrial for us, never considered and, and never really realised why important. Gender is also important in waste management behaviours because if we consider in our current European culture who does what work, then the majority of household work is still done by women. And in the research that I've done and students of mine have done, it's evident that women in the household are those doing the domestic waste management. So they're doing the recycling, they're um, deciding what products to buy and therefore how packaged or unpackaged they are, and therefore kind of controlling waste, but also taking the responsibility and the brunt of the work. So it's really critically important that we involve women as well as men in discussing how best to recycle, how best to dispose of waste, because we want to encourage as many people to do it, so we need to make it easy um, and safe for them. It's also important because women's lives expose them more directly to environmental problems for a number of reasons, um, including poverty, their social roles, and the different bodies that, that we have. Now, the picture I've included here is when I was doing research in Dublin, there was um, a, a huge protest because waste collection had, there had just been introduced charges to waste collection. And it was hitting poorer households in the housing estates outside Dublin. And so it, this was a protest which was led by women, um, which was really say, saying the subtext was, we weren't consulted in this, it doesn't work for us, we haven't got the income to be paying for these collections. So while we might agree that we should be paying for disposal, the approach taken by the city had not been sensitive to gender roles or to some of the issues. And because women's profile in decision making is low, there's a lack of women's involvement in developing strategies. Consumption also is mostly undertaken by women, particularly household consumption. And if we take just three different areas of consumption, in terms of food, there is a huge amount of food waste that we've already heard. In the UK, it's estimated at 7 million tonnes of food waste a year although that is reducing, encouragingly. But most women still do the cooking, they still mostly do the food buying, and therefore it would be um, uh, a good case to involve women in discussing how to handle food waste. In terms of clothing, we have shocking amounts of clothing waste, and I read that we are now, again, in the UK, consuming four or buying four times as many clothes as we were buying in 1980. But we, don't, we can't wear that many clothes because we only have 365 days in the year. And that's creating a lot of, a lot of problems uh, in terms of disposal. Research I've read elsewhere suggests that while there's a burgeoning charity shop business in the UK where people can recycle their clothes, many people just put clothes in the bin. And nappies is another area, diapers. In the UK, re, um, disposable nappies are roughly 3% of the waste stream, which ends up going into either incineration or into landfill. There was an environmental agency report on this a few years ago, which totally underestimated the environmental damage compared to um, the, the convenience. And it actually reported, now technically the environment agency is independent, but it actually reported that there was no environmental advantage to using reusable nappies. But the presumptions that were made were, first of all, that everyone would wash 
reusable nappies at 90 degrees centigrade, which even the industry recommends, I think, 60, that everyone would tumble dry their nappies rather than dry them outside and iron them. Now, if they had consulted with women, they would know that women, mothers, and those men who engage in that do not iron their nappies. So, um, in the EU project I was involved in previously, the, the tasks that we had were threefold. To assess the extent to which national waste plans incorporate gender mainstreaming integrally, and generally they don't, to compare waste management strategies of local authorities in three of the member states, and to prepare model guidelines from this. These were our key findings, um, which, given what I've said already, you won't be surprised about, but that across um, the three countries, waste management was highly masculinized, and that officers, elected representatives, and the public are generally unaware of how gender might be important, that there are gendered impacts that we came across in discussions with uh, waste managers, but that they're not taken into account, um, and that current frameworks for waste management are not well suited to taking these into account. What was interesting was that in some authorities, there was good equal opportunities practice in human resources, for example, or maybe in some other areas, but different offices in local authorities don't talk to each other, so that that expertise wasn't being translated. And that seems to be really important to try to break down silos. So best practice or good practice isn't just transferred between different regions and different municipalities, but between expertise within municipalities. So the ways forward. In a way, it's not, it's not enough to be talking just of gender difference, because within categories men and women, there are many differences. So amongst women, there are women of many different ages. There are women who have children who don't have children. There are women of different ethnic, cultural, religious backgrounds. Um, different levels of physical ability, mobility, and so on. So we need to be taking all of that into account, and of course, with regards to men as well. So we need to be looking at, um, it's being called now gender plus, to incorporate those different um, aspects. We need to be considering that in municipal waste management at all levels. So that would be broadening the mix of skills in the management itself, but also, and I was really pleased to, to hear the uh, governor talking about the importance of public participation. When we involve the public in making decisions or contributing to decisions, it's very important to structure those discussions to involve as many different people as possible. And in particular, not to structure them at the times and places where it's not convenient for mothers with young children, for example, to come, or older women who may not want to go out at night, um, certainly in the UK or um, Irish context. And also to start at the very beginning, so when any, any waste management policy is being considered, to think about what the gender and gender plus aspects of that might be, what are the impacts going to be, and involving participation at the very earliest stages, even if it's not public participation, within the authority itself, to make sure that as many diverse opinions and expertise are brought into, um, into the discussions as possible. And then we have a hope that disposal, um, and recycling, but more importantly, reducing the amount of waste that's produced in the first place is um, sensitive to gender and gender differences and isn't going to complicate or make more different, difficult the lives of women um, in having to manage that recycling at the same time. Thank you.